Takashi six nine. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I I think at, at that point I'm like, okay, um, you've been researching this case as well, which is a totally different case, but it's also really in the media right now, um, and you're sort of the king of that at the moment. So, um, he was part of the nine tray bloods. He was he was throwing up the gang signs. He was saying uh, you know scum gang and all his music and pr- promoting them, um, but in reality he seems to have been. To my knowledge, a stupid little boy who got caught up in some big time dealers. Yeah, so I did a Takashi Six Nine playlist mm. last year because people were interested. He had a Rico case. People didn't understand what that meant. I think we did a clip as yeah. well. Rico like, predicate is that what it's called? It's a it's a conspiracy case where you've got a bunch of co defendants, mm. like I mentioned A B C D E earlier on. Mm-hmm. So I had my conspiracy case, all of the different co defendants. So he was in there, got arrested. And now they're telling him, you've got weapons offences, you've got drug offences, this is a big criminal organisation, nine trade bloods, you're looking at 47 years. Wow. And now looking back, we see from the paperwork and from his testimony that he did roll over quite quickly and agreed, agreed <laughs> to cooperate. 24 hours is quick, isn't it? <laughs> so to be fair, though, he was fucking kidnapped by the guys he was up against. So I kind of understand, but I think they all get what they deserve here at this it's point. It's as if he, he went... Fucking, these guys are criminals. 47 oh years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but there's a blood in, blood out pact with these gangs. If you're going to roll on them and you're going to get up on the stand and send Shotty and all these other guys uh-huh. down on big yeah. sentences, for the rest of your life, you've got KOS, you've got kill on sight. Shotty was the guy who, uh, if people don't remember, when he did the Breakfast Club interview, this guy was brought in to, at one point, speak on his behalf and sort of verify him as a gang member. Um, and... It, it seems as if a lot they were managing him and taking a lot of his money that should have been his. Um, and th- so, th- not only did they kidnap him, they robbed him in broad daylight and basically made a complete mug out of him while he promoted them. So, but he is taking a huge risk here in, in turning. I mean, they turned on him first, but he he's now. I don't know how he has he got an alternative to what he's doing. Really, it feels like there's a gun to his head, regardless. All right, if you sign up for that lifestyle and you're putting hits out on people, which Takashi was, he was, yeah, yeah. I mean, that is class one felony level. So it's like Dave Courtney said. He's another one I interviewed on the podcast. He said, "I carry around with me whatever weapon I know I can do the time for, and my preferred choice is knuckle dusters." Mm. I'm not just going to pull out a gun and shoot someone and end up in prison for the rest of my life. I know if I knock someone out of my knuckle dusters, I'm going to do the time for it. If Takashi 6 9 is putting hits out on people, the murder level, yeah. and then he's just going to roll over in prison, that would be called a bitch move. He's sending everybody else down. So what know. would happen? You just kick KOS? KOS, yeah. He's going to have KOS for the rest of his life. He's KOS now, then. He's, he's, and he's his been family so, members? Yeah. Wow, he's been sad. so stupid because uh, he wanted to promote himself and live that lifestyle and, and be the, the guy who's like, I, I really do this. Like he literally says that in his quotes and his lyrics. And then as soon as it's getting serious, he's just bitched out. But do you think he'll survive it if, if they let him out of it? Or is this witness protection <laughs> at this point? Because it's even witness protection. It's not like you can hire him at a, you know, hire him in a supermarket, have him stacking shelves. Like the tattoos really give it away. The tattoos. Can you uh, get rid of the hair? No, but Jen, I mean, he is so recognisable now. He's a superstar. Have you, you watched the movie Black Mass? No. Mm. You know about that gangster that, that movie was about? The Irish, um, oh, what's his name now? Well, I first thought of Goodfellas because obviously Henry Hill. Hi- Black Mass. Hen- Henry yeah. Hill fucking Henry Hill went down to Goodfellas, testified, and then eventually sold his story later on down the line. But it's not like yeah. you can't do that. You're Takashi Six Nine. Like the whole world knows what you look like. So in Black Mass, he was in the prison system, supposed to be protected. Um, uh, Irish Hoodlum James Bulger. Bulger, yeah. Whitey Bulger, yeah. Mm. So he, uh, it was played he- by um, uh, Johnny Depp in the film. Yeah. yeah. So Whitey Bulger ends up getting moved around the prison system to a, a place where the mafia finally caught with him and took him out. So I don't know how strong and how tight the nine trade bloods are across the country mm. and how you know, far their tentacles reach. But if he gets put in witness protection, for example... They, they weren't oh, like he's bloods. got all these tattoos on his face. How's he going to hide? Yeah, they, they weren't bloods in the sense of like West Coast bloods, though. They, they, it was like the New York... It was a specific sort of... It seems quite a small group. But it's a prison gang, which yeah. is heavy. yeah. Because the people running the prison gangs are 
the people perhaps doing life for murders and mm-hmm. stuff like that. They don't it, play around. They've got nothing left to lose. Either, yeah, really. yeah. But he's got nothing left to lose and he took the alternative. Well, he was fucked. Like, well, yeah. I, it was either life in prison or snitch and have some sort of life. All right, they say it's life in prison in the beginning, but then if you all hang tight and have a united defence, like we discussed in the other mm. clip that we did, mm. the prosecutor in the beginning is saying, you guys all are facing life because they know domino effect. If one falls, they all fall. Like was what happened in Sammy DeBall's case a couple of years before mine. Mm. All 57 agreed to cooperate. In my case, everybody hung tight. Only four agreed to cooperate over 100. And it wasn't enough. Mm. So, you know, I accepted that and signed for nine and a half years on my plea bargain and did my time. I got on with it. They've got, they've got a lot of evidence on uh, 6 and 9. That's the one thing they do have. In, uh, and you're saying if they hang tight... If they had hung tight, I think Takashi 69 could have got it down to anywhere from five to 20 years yeah. and he wouldn't have had to do that whole amount. Right. But the, the one thing is, the, to be fair to the guy, the, one of the main reasons is they fucking robbed him blind and they kidnapped him and beat the fuck out of him pretty much, it seems like. So he seemed scared. All right, uh, so I had people uh, in my organization who testified against me and people said, look, you know, aren't you mad at these people, etc., for doing these things to you? And I said, no. I take responsibility for choosing my association with those people. Mm-hmm. That was my decision. So whatever contact consequences arise after I make that decision, mm-hmm. that's on me. Yeah. He chose to be in the mix of people he knew were running a drug gang and conspiracy to murder operation. Yeah. So he's got, he's got to accept the responsibility He's acting like for a child. Choices. He's act, I mean, he's 23, but he's acting like a, a child who just has not thought through any of this at all. And now it's getting real and he's like, fuck this. Um, he's fucked you, for the rest of his life. It's a no-win se- situation. Uh, do you think he can ever get out and, and, and remake music and go back to that? Because right, so he's even, he's, he's pointing the finger a little bit at Cardi B and he's pointing the finger a lot at, do you remember Jim Jones? Yeah. He's really just said, like, he was the fucking retired rapper. He literally just released yeah. an album. And, and, all right, so there was two co-defendants that didn't <coughs> sign plea bargains that went to trial that caused Takashi to have to get up in court and give testimony under oath. He's already cooperated against all the others. They've signed their plea bargains on, just on what he said on, mm. on, re- on the record with, with, the, with the cops. So by doing that now... You know, he um, it's it's KOS snitch category for the rest of his life. There's no coming back from that. Mm. But Henry Hill, for example, and we're talking real mafia. We're yeah. talking like the mafia. He snitched on uh, everyone. That, that for those who don't know, the guy who Goodfellas is about lived the rest of his life out. They never came from. Yeah. So they only just got Whitey Bulger, and Henry Hill was a, was a low level associate. Yeah. But he, wow. he sent a lot of them down, though. That was one of the things, like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, but, it, it, you know, it, it, look how long it took for him to catch up with Bulger. Yeah. Sammy the Bull, they've not caught with him yet. He's wow. back out now. He got released. And you had contact with him, didn't He was you? my competitor in the XC market. Uh-huh. His uh, people took my top sales guy. They enticed him to a nightclub yeah. in Scottsdale under the pretext of doing a drug deal and knocked his teeth out. Mm. Sammy the Bull's son told me in prison he'd been dispatched one night to kidnap me from a nightclub and take me out to the desert. Mm-hmm. So Sammy the Ball, he sent down John Gotti, the Teflon Don, and hundreds of other people it's he funny, testified against. Because I ask you questions like, are you not worried that you're going to be uh, have a hit put out on you? And I totally forget that you've lived a life that yeah. is full of risk. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, almost, I almost divide Sean from that life to Sean now as yeah. the YouTuber yeah. and I forget that like <laughs> you literally did nine years <laughs> yeah it is kind of funny because a lot of YouTubers are just sort of like you know they they put out their little uh, social hits on people they try and cancel people I think we put Sean in that category weirdly and now and then actually though Sean's lived a lot of life before yeah, that yeah and, which and has been similar fun. to myself you've had a, a real life and, and you've actually had way, even one of the few people I've met who've had more of a life than that <laughs> have you um, well done Sean and, and, uh, and for the record I, I hate those cunts who try and uh, cancel people and stuff but, but I'm on um, good terms with everybody I'm yeah. on good terms with the <laughs> like G-Dog managed. and the New Mexican Mafia people yeah have any of them reached out to you from the past? Yeah, G-Dog has reached out. Uh-huh. G-Dog was the guy who took me over to meet his brothers and they had my back because we protected G-Dog. Uh-huh. I believe I told you that story where yeah. Um, yeah. he pulled out the cop on the gun. Did mm-hmm. I tell you that one? Yeah. The, the cop walks in the house, I can smell weed, nobody yeah. move, and G-Dog's like, the only one who's not moving is leaving is you, motherfucker, and we all run off into the <laughs> night. <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. And I just met the, met the guy. Yeah. He jumps into an apartment nearby that we, we've got, mm-hmm. And because we protected him, he says, me and my brothers have got your back. Mm-hmm. Go over to the brother's house. 
they've got the rocket propelled grenade launcher on the TV. And a, a, a guy who's on a killing spree s- swings a spoonful of coke in my face, says, snort this, you know, because they want to see if I'm an undercover cop or, or whatever. Well, a couple of years later, they're all headline news at that house, all busted, all their photos, heads of the New Mexican Mafia. Mm. And it was g Dog who had my back then. He was one of my bodyguards when I was doing the rave stuff. And g Dog is still in touch. There's no, there's no beef there. There's no frets. Mm-hmm. Sammy the Bulls people, they've gone to Hollywood with mob wives. There's no frets there. So I don't burn my bridges. Mm-hmm. I've not testified against anyone. And these people, you know, um, don't, don't view me as, as a However, since then, the way you tell your story could be perceived by some bad people as snitching because, like, there's song lyrics where rappers have said shit, which is be, like, 50 Cent had a song where um, he, you know, he said things that had happened and people said, yo, he snitched because he said things. You're doing a form of art right now where you're telling your story and, and implicating people and saying what happened. That could be taken badly. If you go into the prison system right away, paedophiles are KOS, kill on sight. Mm-hmm. So if you snitch against any criminal, are you a snitch? If you snitch against a paedophile organization, if you're putting info out there about a paedophile organization. No, I'm talking about the, ba- the people. I, I think I would get a pass for this stuff. No, you get a yeah, pass yeah. for this. I'm talking about some of the other stories that you've told. Are you ever worried about, you know, where you, like the story you've just told about pulling a gun on a cop and stuff like that? You ever All right, so I've changed his name to G-Dog. Okay. He's not going to get in trouble for His any name's of this. Gregory Dog. <laughs> <laughs> All of the uh. stories I've told, Names have been carefully changed. I, I'm just checking. Trouble. I'm Wild just Man throws the real names out. That's yeah, the problem. Yeah, yeah. 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 when Wildman yeah. was on, we, yeah, that was an interesting edit. <laughs> yeah. 